parents are safe with us. Now, financial literacy is the ability to make financial responsible decision as a part of your everyday life, from saving and investing to spending, earning, and borrowing. Now, being able to manage money effectively demands a sophisticated set of skills, ranging from basic mathematical skills to budgeting and understanding of how interest works and emotional, um, what's it called, regulation to avoid um, splurging. Now, today, we're asking how can we bring, or rather, how can we begin to imbibe financial literacy in our children? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Apco 1, with the hashtag Wayshow. So, I don't know about you guys, but I, I am, you know, trying to make sure that, you know, all the children around me, they're learning soft skills. Every, yeah. every one of them, I'm registering them online. Go and learn soft skill and just try to see how you can start to earn money, you know, using different kind of skills, coding, whatever it is that you want to do. What's your thoughts, really? Okay, so, I mean, you know, you know I'm in this space, so this mm -hmm. is an exciting topic for me. Um, I think beyond, the, the popular narrative has been that, um, you know, make money. You know, musicians sing about it, make money or die trying and all that. And we see a lot of young people. I mean, you cannot, dis this, um, you cannot take away from the fact that a lot of young people are trying so hard, you know, to make money, regardless of what they have to do. But financial literacy is so much beyond making money. When we're teaching children about money, when we teach them about their abilities to earn or how they need to earn, what they need to do to earn, we must also teach them the principles around managing and multiplying money. Mm. And that is when we are talking about financial literacy. We must begin to talk to them about the principles. Again, we have to come back to the fact that, um, to, the, to the point of who is teaching who. Mm. Because if you, as a parent or a guardian, you do not even have the first knowledge about financial literacy, you cannot pass that knowledge. Yeah. Your understanding, your belief system about money, sorry, your belief system about money comes from what you know. So if you have the wrong value system. And what you practice. Exactly. If you have the wrong value system, it, it goes to say that what you will be teaching would be based off what you know. Mm. And that may not necessarily be true, you know. So again, I would say that um, children, the focus shouldn't be just earn money. You know, the focus should be understand the value of money. Understand what needs are, you know, learn to differentiate between needs and wants. Mm -hmm. Learn to manage money. Because, I mean, as an adult, even as a child, you're growing up, you, you go to school, you come out of university early, you get a good job. Sometimes it doesn't take you. Some people are so lucky. You can make millions mm -hmm. in the blink of an eye. But the question is, how many people have been able to retain those millions? And sustain. That's the problem. Mm. How mm. are you so quickly? Make, manage, so, multiply. Mm. I'm not going to take it from the kids' point of view mm. because I ain't got kids. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, don't worry. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, today we are talking about you. Don't talk about that. Don't come and share your problem with us. Please, 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 please. I'm not talking about my adult <laughs> years. I'm talking about my growing up. Oh, okay, okay, go ahead. I Oh, come on. Enjoy, enjoy. enjoy. <laughs> Let me bring it exactly. So this is what I'm trying to say. So for me, I grew up not being taught how to save money, mm -hmm. how to. I just knew that you had you needed to have money in order to survive whatever situation you were going through or in order to even leave. So for me, from a very young age, I decided I wanted to have money. I wanted to be able to make money, invest money, and be in money because I love to travel. So I wanted to start saving early. And I remember the first time my father gave me um stipends yeah allowance and he asked me he just asked us and he said what are you going to use that to do and i said i was going to use it to open an account and he said oh no i'll give you money to open an account he mm. never did though. but i used i didn't listen to him i used that money to open an account and i'm proud to say that one of my longest standing accounts is that account wow. that i have been using for years it had just gone you know it was bought but that, that's one of my private accounts that I've been using to save money for years to do a whole lot of other things that I do apart from work and all that. So it's one you thing you don't to get know. sense from a young age. Yeah. No, I just wanted to have money because mm. I wanted to travel and I knew that that cost money. Mm. So it, the part of investing is a long, you know, what, as I grew up that I made, I, you know, things that you're 
education in terms of television and what have you. You see how people make money. You ask certain small Which questions is, yeah. that might sound unwise at the time, but you realize that you need to save mm -hmm. in order to make money. Mm. So for me, it was a personal experience and a personal journey all through. Mm. But there are still things that I wish I had, no, like no. budgeting, yeah. managing debt and all that. But Kathleen is here. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Kathleen is the founder and the GMD Kudimata Nigeria Limited, um, Penyo Consult Limited, and Poi Finishing School. She was the executive director, chief marketing officer at Hope um, PS Bank, and the deputy general manager at Keystone Bank Nigeria Limited. She also worked in Keystone managerial positions. Um, also at Access Bank also for 15 years, uh, I think plenty, extending her extensive banking experience to about 26 years. Kathleen has established herself as a change agent by promoting basic financial education in Nigeria through her institution, Kudimata, a financial community where money questions, problems and concerns are addressed. And today... She's joining us from the UK as she's not live with us in studio. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Moa. How are you Kathleen. doing? All good, all good, all good. It's been an yeah. interesting conversation. I've been listening. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are done with the with the session. I'm not sure what I would say. <laughs> no way. No <laughs> way. You, you can teach us some new things, I'm sure. <laughs> Right? No, no, no. You cannot go home, oh, Kathleen. <laughs> because ah. right now, I need you more than you need me. Yeah. Dollar is 800 ah. and uh, what do they call it? 55 Naira. Yeah. Pounds is 110 ah. Naira. 1,000, sorry, 1,110 Naira. Kathleen, I have high BP. <laughs> if I, that man that was asking for BP... Just calm it down. Calm it down. <laughs> so that man that was talking about BP... It should, it's going to the wrong so, place to go and check for BP. <laughs> you should just look for parents that are paying school fees. I mean, so Kathleen, that's like an on, on the side, just to, to, to yeah. uh, make, make light of the situation. But yeah. truly, right, um, more than ever before, um, I see the need to um, translate financial literacy in the most practical way for our children. And because, again, not because of, you know, like with the situation getting tighter, tougher things getting a lot more expensive, right? I was just thinking, how do we solve some of these financial challenges that, you know, we do not get to adult age and it, it's now a problem for us? Because I think, I mean, like NJ rightly said, um, imagine if certain things she was taught at a younger age. I mean, she did a few things based on native knowledge, but imagine if someone truly put her through to say, you know what, this is the approach, this is this, this is that, this is how you can convert your skills. So we're talking financial literacy. Right, there's the part that you first of all must earn money, right? Then you must find a way to then invest the money and you find a way to manage the money or spend the money or budget the money, right? Literally, if we, if, yeah, so if we're talking about children of today, what would financial literacy mean to them and how should they even begin to approach financial literacy? So, financial literacy to um, children of today. So maybe the definition of who a child is or who should actually be financially literate. Mm. I think maybe we'll start from there. Yeah. For as uh, small as a child, preschool child, um, who you would give money or you ask how much, because every uh, small children are aware of what money is. Worst case, they will tell you, give me two money. Mm. They will tell you, give me two money. A child will tell you, how much do you want? You say, give me two money. Which means that that two money, one is for use, one is for keep. Mm. So you can actually uh, do age-appropriate training for those um, that class of children. You have two money. Keep one and use one to buy lollipop or lolly and sweet. So for children, it is actually um, giving them the skills, the ability with any money they get and given to them by aunties, uncles, anybody, learn how to make wise financial decisions. Mm. Okay, instead of buying burger, I want to keep this money somewhere first. My um, piggy bank, just put it there. Those are the little, 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 little ways we can start. And it's important, not only from home, at school level, at preschool, level basic financial skills on money matters 
are taught. Mm. It is very, very crucial that this understanding, because it helps the child build that foundation that will guide the future, make the child even responsible when it comes to money matters and their demands. Because nowadays, these are our children, they are very, very, what's that word? Um, what's that? I think they are, they depend so much on you. Mm. They are, um, they don't even think, they are very entitled. Mm. Whether you make it or you don't make it, they just think that it is their right well, it should, it to have be their what right. they need. They did not ask to oh. come to this world, Kathleen, now. It, it should be their right. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's their yeah, right. It's their, their right. right with what you have to give to them. Hmm. Not that what their neighbor have, because they've seen what their neighbor have, or what they bought burger for one child, so they say, okay, now it's your turn to buy me burger, because they bought burger, or they bought... Um, one shoe for one. I know I want that kind of shoe. No. But with that skills, understanding, managing your money matters as it relates to your your own little Congo family is actually so, very important. Kathleen, let me go back to what you said about curriculum, right, in the schools. Because I know that in certain schools, especially in, um, what's it called, in the Western world, you see them teach them. So, for instance, they go and do baking. They go door to door, they knock, they say, okay, they are trying to sell out, so they do a big they sale. They learn how to earn you understand? from they learn small. How to, thank you. So you see yeah. that? They learn how to earn from small. From but small. When they learn how to earn, in the Western world still, they still teach them. It's part of curriculum. So we are we here. imbibing those curriculum in our schools today? In right? our day, here, yeah, it's not here. Yeah, it's not part there. of what we need to push to ensure mm -hmm. that even if you don't even put it in curriculum, mm -hmm. You invite people to come and teach. You create scenarios, opportunities where you can interact with these children, age appropriate, on money matters. It's never too early to start because it is the foundation that that child would have as they grow up. And that's what will help to shape the future for these children. So it is very, very critical that it is started at an early age. Those principles, those rules, those values. Hmm. Those little, little things that you think is not important. Our children nowadays, they carry iPhone. Mm -hmm. huh. When they start to work, can they afford it? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. yeah. Ha, problem. Let's it. go on a break. So we have started them on wrong path. Hmm. But end it. Can they afford it? Hmm. No. A young graduate will end between 100 and 300, a best case scenario. You know, buy any iPhone, no? Hmm. On that note, maybe we take a break because this one a problem. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back from that break, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. Mm. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing financial literacy for children. Literacy. And we have a remote Kathleen on Mamo Day. Um, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You know, when Kathleen mentioned that iPhone matter, I just, <laughs> just hide my head. And the truth is, they can't afford it. Because if you want to buy an iPhone now, you're looking at maybe from 300000 and above, like the older model. Newer models are like 800000 a million naira. And if your child is already using an iPhone at 11 or maybe 12 or 10, you know, you don't expect the child to go to a, a 3310 uh, when they eventually graduate and, you know, they cannot afford it. But let me hear your, um, your question to Kathleen. Okay, so I know that um, in 2017, um, the Nigerian Educational um, Research and Development Council and the Central Bank of um, Nigeria in collaboration with um, other financial institutions, moved to develop like a teacher's guide, you know, to um, inculcate the um, financial literacy into school programs. So my question to Kathleen is, um, did this, um, you know, did this um, policy, did it, is it effective? Is it, because I know for now, you know, um, public school systems do not have anything around financial literacy. 
Now, um, anything you, you see schools doing around financial literacy is probably the proprietor or the principal or being NGOs, you exactly partners and then says, okay, you know what, let's come and teach you guys and all that. So um, I think that um, if in adopting this, this is the best way because, again, like she said, um, you cannot give what you don't have. You, you cannot teach what you don't know. So the first step would be to teach the, the teachers, you know, to equip them with the principles of, you know, financial literacy so that they can pass it on to the student. So um, Kathleen is in this space. Um, do you know if um, the government, you know, fol um, followed through huh. with this policy? She said not, Dana. She'll be answering. Okay. So, Kathleen. <laughs> so what do we do then? I mean, is there, is there a way to advocate more for this or to be, what, brought, back you know, to to be brought back and then become for conversation for now? Because again, we must look at how much people are suffering. That's at the core of everything people are experiencing now is money. Financial hardship. It's financial hardship. So... And with financial literacy, it would make them even understand a lot better exactly. and know how to handle things. It's not anywhere, but um, I have been speaking with some key stakeholders mm. to see how we can push it into the curriculum and not just the curriculum. Um, today, we push financial inclusion, financial inclusion. Financial inclusion is but a product. Yeah. They are products. So say, for example, you teach mama already, open account. Mama opens account. Mama is not taught anything. Mama goes to an uh, ATM to want to withdraw money because all mama's money now is in bank. Mama does not know what to do. Mama sees boy in front of ATM. My picking, help me do this thing. Mama, mama what it be that pin? Mama gives pin to um, boy and money, money is gone. That's why you see a lot of um, people, the unbanked, who have now been included, come to the banking halls of uh, banks crying, looking for their funds because they have been fraudulently dealt with. So financial literacy in Nigeria, in Nigeria at the moment, is less than less than 20%. So actually, we need to, everybody, everybody, including me and you, need to actually improve on our financial literacy level. So it is open. There are um, avenues. I say I do financial literacy. I have a community where I push and push, and I'm basically pushing from young adults, uh, the coppers at the moment, on financial literacy, I'm promulgating that all coppers must even be financially literate, some form of certification, even before they leave uh, um, the camp. And then there are educators within their geographies, and because if they are educators within their geographies, they are able to impact this bit of knowledge. Mm. And then the parents and teachers they are equipped enough with that basic understanding to help the little ones, to handhold them, to teach them, oh, no, this is what you do. Oh, okay, so uh, you can bake little cake or you can do this. I take my daughter, for example. I've been teaching her. Okay, so she does beads, bead work, and she does artwork. When she finishes, I, you have to sell it, and this and this and this is how you do it. You have to make profit. This is what... And she, you have to just do it and put your money in Congo, save this, and this will, you fly back. You'll be um, amazed that this is even for the um, unbanked or the, I don't know whether to call it the, um, I don't know the, what, how to term it, that class of people. There are younger ones that I even support them in the market, in all of all those um, small MSME and SMEs. They even learn, they are a lot more financially literate than are people that have gone to proper schools yeah. who have no knowledge, no understanding, but just sense of bit of entitlement and to demand, demand, demand. So we all need to, everybody hmm. need to learn small. Everybody, everybody. There are platforms. Come to Kudimata, you will learn. There are little quizzes that you would have you would um, go through the quizzes. They are understand. You would learn from them because there are options. And then you try. When you make a mistake, you try and you learn. There are books around. There, there is a must do, and it's critical at this stage for just not our individual self, but for the country at large. Because if we're all financially literate to a certain level, 
we are able to manage and make better decisions, hmm. better, that would help us. So for me, I'm just going Every to... Every one of us, and the country at large. Because they say it's one step to another. A yep. child to a parent and to the country. Okay. Mm. Mm. All right. It's yeah, go ahead. Building yeah. blocks. I, for me, I'm just going to pick you up what uh, she has meant. She has said a lot of things, and that's one of the questions I wanted to ask that... Um, Majorly, because I just checked on Google and it says um, our current uh, financial literacy is about 64.1%. So I'm just wondering, for people like us, mm -hmm. because there are a lot more, they said there are a lot of youth, but I feel like there are a lot more older generation yeah. that are not into this financial thing. They don't even understand what it is. Like, even for me, it took a while to understand what I can say that I thought, so I learned some things along the way, but when it comes to things like, should you borrow, should you not? How should you borrow? How should you go about it when you want to borrow? Because that is, those are the issues that people get into now when they want to do business. People mm. borrow money from the bank and they don't do a lot of calculations knowing that, okay, the bank is going to take interest, you know, and a few other charges and everything. So how am I going to pay back? How am I going to invest? And it even stops you from being able to do proper budgeting, you know? Okay. So for me, what I wanted to ask was, how can parents immediately start teaching their children because things like borrowing and budgeting how do you teach you know saving very easy like you like you know like she rightfully gave an example two naira one naira one one money one money so they can understand that but at the at what point do you start teaching the main things which is like managing debt investing. borrowing investing at what point do you start teaching that? You can teach how to save from a very young age, piggy, bank, and all that. But how do you start teaching you know? them investments? Yeah. Investment is even faster. Um, you can actually teach, stay from that child too. That's um, sharing. You know when you share, it's almost like you borrow and then you get it back. Give you your, my, your toy to play and then you get it back. It is actually a form of borrowing and then getting it back. But... Um, a child will not really, really, really borrow until they get to a certain level in school. Mm. You can simulate a borrowing. Part of the teaching process that um, you can use to educate these young ones is to practicalize them at home. Simulate those situations for the children, and then they learn. Your child wants a phone. Okay, so let me use my daughter, for example, she wanted a phone. She gets a monthly allowance. I reduced it, the monthly allowance, and I spread it over a period of time, taking out a certain sum, because as far as I'm concerned, that was boring. So she had to reduce what she typically would use money for to accommodate the cost of the phone. And that's what you we go to banks, to go and um, collect um, loans for um, household um, equipment, things, your TV, your radio, your generator, your fridge, you would have done that. So it is from small, you start to learn how to reduce that expense because actually that's how it starts. You learn how to leave, you remove those excesses, remove those luxury and learn to set aside. Okay. So let, let's go back to skills, right? Because again, some children don't really have people around that give them those free money. They don't give them free cash and all of that, but they have certain kinds of skills, right? What would you say that you want to start to encourage parents to do when it comes to right, um, like upscaling the, the, um, the child so that at least you know, the child can start to see ways to earn money? I mean, my... My son was giving me a beautiful analogy this, this afternoon. I said, ah, so you did that. I said, yes, you built a community in school. A particular beverage is very scarce, but milk is very, very, is free. Is, so, so they do this kind of exchange. For you to join the community, you first of all deposit four milk. I mean, a two milk. Oh. If you are living in the community, oh. you deposit four milk. As in, not be smart, you know, you say, oh. yes. I, it was telling me proudly that I built that community. <laughs> So me and I told him, I said, Uncle, that one is a sachet, sachet milk and beverage. How can we convert that to Naira and Kobo? Do you understand? <laughs> oh, so how do we take that model 
and bring yes, it funds. into making real funds, you know, because it was a, such a beautiful model. And I said, so what so are you doing? Funds. How do they make this? How do they do this? He kept on explaining it, how the thing, and the thing has been working in his school, you know. But so, uh, so now he has that kind of a skill. How does he convert that skill into like making real money? So how do we build those kind of skills in our children? Because you first of all need to earn before you can know what to manage or what to borrow or what to lend or what to invest. No, that's not the beginning. You have to actually understand first. Okay. Before you start to earn. Mm. Financial literacy starts from the knowledge, mm. the understanding. So you know already first. So when you start to earn, you know exactly what to do. Mm, okay. So by the time you are earning, you have passed the first stage already. Mm. Because then you are setting goals already. You are already implementing your skills. Mm. So it starts from the little book work you have learned, the information you pass on to the child. If you get this money, this is what you do. So those values, those concepts, those skills are embedded in the kids or in the children, or in us adults as we grow. And then when, after that, then you go to the next level. That's first understanding mindsets must first be in the right context before you now go to earning, setting goals, financial goals. When you get to that financial goals, you set them, then you start to implement, you start to act. And then when you start to act, you know exactly what to do. Because then when you end, you know, a lot of people do the 50, 30, 20 rule. 50 is for your general utility, all of that. 20 is for, okay, feel good. This is my me money. And then the remaining 20 is for savings, hmm. emergency funds. Hmm. So that is how you start it. But you must first have done the basics, understanding the money skills first before you start to end. And talking about your son, it's something um, I, a young guy told me today. He built... You know, um, we all, um, we have um, data, we have um, net, Netflix, we have all of all those utilities we pay for. So yeah. I would have paid for all of them, but I won't utilize them like that. So mm. they've got a shared platform. There is a, a ton of digital, a lot of digital things are happening now. Where those is in the pool, so you go there and pick what you want to use at the time you want to use it. And it's shared. So it became, that's a cost-effective way. So what your child is, is doing is what somebody, I, I can introduce him to them, and he puts his product in that platform. That's for secondary school. Mm. And it works. Bring my diary and bring my milk and bring my, my cabin biscuits. I'm telling so you, that's what they have been doing, Cecil. So. I say, hey. I take that, and then it balances. But it is actually very, very important we start to teach our children mm. how to earn mm. the value of money. Mm. And when you even earn, when you come back, age appropriate, up to preschool, the age appropriate um, curriculum or resource that you can use to equip the child with those basic understanding that we guide them as they grow to be financially independent mm. and responsible people awesome. as they grow. Awesome. I was telling my son, I said, I hope it's not MMM. Because he said, if they give this something, no, something. No, no. You, he said, no, 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 no mommy. That, I said, ah, uh -uh, because no, you ask, where do you get the two, the two milk that you used to pay? He has done the money. He said, they have calculated it. I said, ah, ah, okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. I, I actually, I, what they're doing. I was fascinated by it. You so know? It's, it sounds like Children a mixture Children bake, they, they draw. Yeah, 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 kind of, yeah. So, so, you know, a lot of, there are a lot of things that children are being taught at the moment, this summer, children would have been children will be taught a lot of things, mm. but without financial literacy, mm. without financial literacy, the teaching, what would they do with it? Mm. Because that's second level. So the foundation is the basic financial knowledge, money management. Okay, and so it actually equalizes everybody. Mm. Yeah. Because uh, it, it, uh, social class, all of that, it actually puts you on that platform. Everybody on the same platform. So the, 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 the less privileged person understands that this and this is what I need to do and money manage my money to be at this level. The, the person who is up there needs to do this to retain that level. It comes down the ladder. So it is a stabilizer, a, a balancing thing for us to start to put, um, to teach our children through for equal, uh, equality. Mm, awesome. All right, let's take comments quickly. Okay, um, so this is um, 
Kinsley from Worry Delta State. He said, um, today is so important, financial literacy, today is so important with the topic financial literacy for children. I wish every parent is watching this program. I have an eight month old baby girl who already has an account and I have been saving for her from the first month she was born. There is an account called SKS in GT, in GT Bank, um, Smart Kids Savings mm. from zero to 17. Mm, nice. Mm. Wow. Mm. So, good evening, my dear uh, beautiful sisters of What Are You Saying Ways? Financial literacy for children. My dear beautiful sister, Diola made mention of three points, which is very important and should not be ignored. Number one, the ability to make money and, un and understand the value of money. Number two, the difference between needs and wants. Number three, making millions and ability to sustain these millions. Your guest also said that uh, a child must face his or her priority when money is placed in their hands. Sister, well, God bless you. We need to tell representative, <laughs> representative Kola Jaye to channel the check <laughs> of blood pressure and sugar level to the roads and not to the airports. My name is Daniel Ilo, <laughs> Ways regular fan. Thank you, Daniel Ilo. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. So let me take this comment from um, Mrs. Adeniji from Aja. Uh, she's becoming a regular yeah. commentator. She says, good evening, my dear sisters. For this relaxing topic today, <laughs> to that of combusting... <laughs> To that of the combustible one of yesterday, ah, yesterday was, yes, even my well, chest was paining when I left it. <laughs> he said, on the suggestions of the rep to be testing for blood pressure and level, uh, sugar level, it is a misplaced priority. They are, no, they are not busy. The issue they are supposed to be dealing with is still in abundance. Please help remind them to focus on their official <laughs> duties. On the topic of financial literacy for children, I got a piggy bank for my children when they were young and encouraged them to be putting money given to them there, no matter how little or more. And it was the money I used to start my business. Wow, hey, I'm coming to you, all these mothers. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm very guilty. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was the money I used to start my business when there was no help on site, uh, on site then. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It is over 17 years now I am still in business. Wow. Though I have returned, okay, she has returned their money. Me, I have not returned their own. I have returned their money back to them some years later. Uh, so my children are not used to, um, is it ogle unnecessary things or to buying unnecessary things? Instead, they are used to saving to get um, what they want in their adult life and helping out uh, with the parents not to be overburdened. Oh, nice. Very nice. So That's really, really, really nice. I'm They're telling you, Kathleen. Yes, for, there are boot camps everywhere. Kudi Mata is even doing a boot camp. For guilty, wait, for, for guilty mothers like us that we have finished all the, return all the money. Money. Ah, you should pay and calculate pay time value interest. of money as well. I'm guilty. I will yeah, not like money is money is today. Of money. I return it with interest to the to their account. Exactly. I'm very <laughs> guilty. I did a standing order. I was saving judiciously, but something just happened. I needed to touch them. Send your children to Kudi Mata boot camp. When they lend, when they come back to you, we pay with enough interest. Ah, I will right? not say, that's the money that I will not send them. Through mm. <laughs> the month of August, let them come to the... But uh, honestly, I, I'm actually looking forward to that uh, boot camp. Because again, yeah. um, we are in... Would I say we are in interesting times? Let me not use my mouth to call it a different thing. But mm. we are actually in interesting times. And the, the financial um, pool would yeah. just be... It's all on all corners, right? Um, with the, you know when they increased uh, petrol to uh, six seventeen, six dollar was seven fifty. Today that dollar is eight fifty five. Mm. We don't know what the set, the next um, dollar. I mean, the what's it called? Rate petrol rate. rates will be. Mm. So, but I mean, thank you, Kathleen, for this. And I'm looking forward to the boot camp because my children would uh, would try to come. Even though they are forming they big boys, they need, no, no, no. You know, say sometimes they are forming like, I'm, I'm, mommy, I'm too big for that. But they, you don't need to be too no, big no, for no, financial all literacy. children from the age of, at least for this, we will take from the age of nine to twenty. Yeah. So, well, Kathleen, even me, come. I am coming. I'm a child for this boot camp because mm -hmm. I want to come and learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will do for us. <laughs> I want to come and learn because I know it's that open. I have made terrible financial decisions mm -hmm. in my life, mm -hmm. and with this. With this current situation of the dollar matter, mm -hmm. I cannot afford to make any mistakes again. Yeah. I have to learn. Yeah. 
So we are not. Okay. We can. We can take on the position as children. Please mm. accept us like that. Please, everybody, come. <laughs> come on, come on. Thank you so much, Kathleen. It's always a pleasure having you. Everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies. We had a fantastic conversation. Yes, yes, Tomorrow yes. I'll bring another combustive topic. Wow. Just wait. Let me calculate myself. And you shall be here <laughs> to do justice. Bye. <laughs> So I'm sure you follow us across all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and come follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. It's powerfully important that our kids get an education in personal finance, both from their families and in school. And that is especially important as more young people must take on huge debt loads to go to college. And that's the truth, right? College is really expensive. So since you know that these things will happen, just give them financial literacy. See you guys tomorrow. They are shouting in my ear. Move on. Bye.